The thing I'm most proud about in the company is the variety in work. We work for completely different marketplaces. We've designed these chairs that are in our office and this telephone that we did for Wang in Boston. We've done lots of telephones, all kinds of different telephones that are different. Anyway, and um, medical products. This is a mechanism from a glucometer for a prize and uh, a balloon angioplasty inflator and a thing to shoot cows with hormones. We do lots of electronic things as well. This is a dialex where you can take a card out and put it in and it dials the person you want. But the point is they're in completely different markets, so you really have to go out and learn different things. This is one of my favorites. This is uh, called Monster Shoes. The kids really love these. You take a little guy and you put him up on your shoe, put it up here, put your kids put it in their shoes like this, and then they can play. But anyway, so it's all over the place, furniture, medical products, computer products, whatever. Hello, David Kelly Design. No, I'm sorry. Brad is in a meeting. May I take a message, please? Yeah. Okay, thank you. I'll have him phone you back. Hello, David Kelly Design. No, I'm sorry. He's away from his desk. May I take a message? Hello, David Kelly Design. No, I'm sorry. He's out to lunch. May I take a message? Hello, David Kelly Design. No, I'm sorry. He's in a meeting. May I take a message? No, I'm sorry. He can't be interrupted. So why don't we go on a tour and see what people are doing? This is Sean Kokorin. Sean's designing a beach chair for us. Why don't you tell us a little about it, Sean? Can you do it? It's an all-plastic beach chair. Uh, intended to be the only thing you have to take to the beach. It, uh, it opens up like this. And you just got a luggage compartment inside. It's got a sunshade, which attaches up here. Take that out. It's also got a, a beverage cooler, which comes what out. What do you got in that cooler? Uh, beer. <laughs> for later. For later. Yeah, at least at least 15 minutes from now. Uh, this clips onto the edge. Got three positions. So is testing difficult for this thing? Very, very difficult. Come on. Let's see what we got going in this office. This is Don Manami's office, and he was one of the designers on this this uh, device, which is a 35 millimeter slide maker. You just um, plug it into your Macintosh computer, wherever it is and then you can get 35 millimeter slides instantly. Pretty neat thing that we developed the technology for. And this guy is Adrian Smith. And Adrian is designing a cholesterol meter for our, one of our clients called Cholestech. And I don't know much about it. Adrian, why don't you tell us what's going on? OK, well, this is a uh, what they call a bleed and read type meter. You uh, lance the patient's finger, put a drop of blood in the cassette here. Thing opens up like a CD player. They put the disposable in, push the button, drawer closes. A few minutes later, thing opens back up again and just displays their cholesterol level on an LCD. Huh. Everybody seems to be excited about what their cholesterol level is. Have you had yours checked? Yeah, everyone who uh, goes to Cholestech is forced to submit to the uh, <laughs> finger stabbing sessions. So. This is Dave Blakely. He's working on lots of interesting stuff and a particular project for Eli Lilly. Why don't you tell us about it, Dave? Sure. A couple months ago, I had a very rah-rah interview with David. He said, we insist that all our designers get hand-on experience in whatever they do. And I said in this very corporate male bonding way, good, good. And I said, well, David, I'm interested in medical equipment and uh, I don't mind traveling. I don't mind working very hard. And he kind of echoed back, that's good. That's good. And David is a man of principle, so about six months later, I found myself on a farm in downtown Indiana getting hands-on experience injecting cattle with this tiny needle. What does this thing really do? What this tiny needle and elegant device does is to increase the milk output in cows. And part of the game in the design is to design something that can be used at arm's length so that you can sneak up on one side of the cow and poke them on the other because they always kick on the side that they're getting poked in. So when you sneak up this way and do this one, the cow just lifts her leg over there and you're safe. So it's like doing this. Exactly. This is Scott Underwood's office. He runs our CAD facility. Hey, 
This is uh, Otto's office. You can see he's working on lots of medical things, lots of uh, valving and so forth. This is a blood analyzer for SIVA. Here we go. Here's, this is Denny Boyle. Dennis has been working on a project for us, a big project. Um, it's called the DynaBook, and it's a new portable computer. Why don't you show us it, Dennis? This thing always drives me nuts. Let me get it. Oh. It's a laptop computer, and the, the three goals uh, the client stated at the beginning of the project were that it'd be thin, thin, and thin. Uh, so we made it out of magnesium to get very thin walls. Uh, we made it very modular to all come apart. Very thin battery to allow three or four hours of use. Very thin display, three tenths of an inch thick. And You're supposed to stick this thing in your briefcase and fly across the country, is right. that the idea? Well, you take it out of your briefcase and use it on the <laughs> way across. Uh, what do you do that makes for product success? Floss. Floss. I floss. I floss all day, every day. Flossing. I'm new and I'm just learning to floss. Floss. This, this guy's not doing anything, I can tell that. Come on in here. This gentleman is Brad Melman, who's sort of our 3D CAD expert. Oh, hi, Dave. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, Brad's working on a project with the, the boys in Italy at uh, Sato Sociati. It's a new Enorme radio, and uh, uh, it's really helped us out to be able to use this kind of uh, equipment on it. Brad, why don't you like, set it, have it do something so we can see it? Sure, I'll just uh, I'll rotate it around here. I've been trying to figure out what those components are. They've got all these weird squiggly things. I do sort of like it. <laughs> You're looking good, Brad. Well, thanks, Let's Dave. go back here and see who's... Hiding back here. Yeah, did you get those uh, drawings I sent this morning? This is uh, Mark Glusker. Appears to be on the telephone as well. I don't, I don't yeah, know if we'll get him to get, to get off. But anyways, Mark's been designing things like uh, devices for budget rent a car to, you know, make maps on how you get there, and a device that time releases drugs. No, I, no, I don't think it'll work out. We really do need a sooner than that. I don't know. Well, I guess we, I guess he's not going to get off. We should go. It works every time. This is Jim Yurchenko. He's uh, been with the company longer than any other employee in the place, and I think he also has the uh, cleanest office. What do you think? Anyway, Jim, uh, tell us what you've been working on. Well, currently, I've been working mostly on a little mechanism for a blood glucose monitoring system we're doing for a company down in Mountain View. And the mechanism pulls these little pads out of these disposable cassettes and delivers them to the user. Um, fairly recently, we finished a, a fairly large job for Next Computer. And these are some of the original parts that I get to keep. Uh, <laughs> it's all magnesium, right? Yeah, die cast magnesium, uh, die cast aluminum. Uh, when you buy a machine, they won't look quite so uh, gray. They'll look uh, elegantly black, won't they? <laughs> yeah, sure. Something to keep Steve happy. This is Walt Conti. Walt's designed a lot of things for us. He's doing. A, he's a project leader on a big blood analyzer, but he's also doing. Um, the special effects for movies, and Walt was responsible for the whales in Star Trek IV, and now he's just finished the special effects to all the underwater vehicles for a new movie called The Abyss. And um, it was quite an interesting shoot. Why don't you tell us well, about he's, South Carolina? He's about 12 hours underwater in total darkness at the bottom of a nuclear reactor. And actually, <laughs> it was a reactor that never got finished, but it was turned into the biggest tank in the world for filming The Abyss. And um, well, what did we really do? I mean, what, what's our responsibility? I mean. We actually built some uh, model hot rod submarines to do a big crash scene with. Obviously, you can't do it with the big subs, so we had to build these miniatures that were radio controlled underwater with all our scuba gear, and they just went along crashing into each other throughout the movie. Roll cameras, mark it, and action! It was by far like the most ambitious underwater film ever done. Um, I think everyone agrees that worked on it. Um, it's the first time that 45% of the film was shot underwater, and that's like by far more than anything that's been shot. Um, usually a lot of it is cheated, where you shoot things on stage with smoke, 
And um, here it was actually, almost everything you see was actually done underwater. They built a refilling station underwater to avoid having to have all the actors come up to replace tanks. You could actually refill the tank at the bottom of the, um, of the big tank. We built a quarter scale, exact quarter scale duplicates of the big subs. The big subs were you know, used for all the shots where the actors were in, actually inside, but they were real slow and were actually connected with the cable to the surface. So for all the shots where you need action shots of them hitting each other or, or where you see the entire sub tumbling, they used our quarter scale models. The um, submarines were controlled through um, radio signal, which doesn't like to travel through water, so we had to really beef up the signal to shoot through the water. And it turned out you could probably, every CB or within 200 miles could probably hear our signal. The biggest challenge was that these things had to be fast. I mean, underwater, everything slows down. And in order to pull off a chase sequence, you got to show action. And so these things had to really move. And yet it was try like trying to move this big sheet of plywood through the water because the subs really weren't designed to be fast. They were designed to be pretty and to, to look um, cool underwater. No, I'm sorry, you can't be interrupted. May I take a message?